Today, the small islands in the Pacific are facing enormous ecological and environmental challenges. The alarming rise in sea levels is endangering their very survival. Climate change is slowly destroying their way of life. Their simple lives are being threatened. Food is getting scarce because they are so dependent on transportation by sea and that is expensive and unreliable. For lighting, the poor depend on kerosene to come from the main islands. Often it comes after long periods because the distance is so great. When they have the money, they use kerosene lamps, torches and improvised gadgets, but they cannot afford it. Surrounded by the sea, they still face a serious problem of portable drinking water. Thousands are living a hand-to-mouth existence. The top-down Western model has simply not worked because they have not given any recognition nor shown enough respect to the rich indigenous knowledge, skills and culture the people have in these islands. In this vast area covering a mass equal to the whole continent of Africa on water, they have survived with dignity and courage for thousands of years. But so-called developed countries have made them believe they have neither the skills nor the capacity and competence to cope with sophisticated technology or tackle the massive problems of livelihoods, literacy, health and disaster management on their own. If the men cannot think of a sensible and practical way out, it was time the rural ordinary women took over and set an example. Traditional island culture holds grandmothers in high esteem. In 2010-2011, two illiterate grandmothers were selected from the slums in the Islili area in Sopu, Tonga, came to India under the Government of India iTech program to be trained as solar engineers. It was an incredible challenge. Could they solar electrify their own community when they came back? The results were beyond expectations. The two ordinary women from the slums became unlikely heroes. When the Speaker of the Indian Parliament recently visited Tonga, she applauded them as the first solar engineers of Tonga. It became national news. In March 2012, with the collaboration of the government of Fiji, 10 grandmothers from non-electrified villages in the islands of Vitilevu, Vanualevu and Kadavu arrived in the Barefoot College. Without using the written or spoken word, only sign language, six months later, they are now happy, bubbly, confident solar engineers. The Prime Minister of Fiji was amazed to meet them in Delhi and see how confident they were. Oh, thank you very much for bringing the ladies across. On his return, he instructed the Minister of Women's Affairs, along with the Fiji High Commissioner, to visit them at the college and bring them home in September. They will return as heroes. That in itself is uh, an indication of uh, the kind of uh, capacity building, particularly for women, that uh, the Barefoot College is, um, uh, is providing. Well, the, the visit to the college has been an amazing one. It's an eye-opener and um, there's a lot to be, to be learned from the programs that the Barefoot uh, College is offering to the women and to the underprivileged. With such a small beginning, the idea of empowering women, indeed most of them illiterate grandmothers, have snowballed across the Pacific Islands. Totally bewildered but delighted by this human down-to-earth, bottom-up, grassroot approach, communities took major decisions like agreeing to pay a monthly contribution for repair and maintenance, donate a building to establish a rural electronic workshop, form village committees to collect, control and manage the money, for spares and replacements of batteries and select the grandmothers to come to India in September 2012. The 21 square kilometer island of Naru has barely survived the ravages of an unchecked mining boom. It carries today the scars of its brief prosperity written on its landscape. The isolated communities are shaken and desperately looking for alternatives from these very communities. Where there is high unemployment and so little reason for hope, four gutsy grandmothers have been selected, among them from Nibok district, from Anabad district, to be the first women solar engineers of Naru. Very innovative and fantastic. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's just awesome. I like the part that you've actually targeted to grandmothers 
because there are not yeah. a lot of opportunities mm. that are yeah, for especially. grandmothers. There are a lot of like opportunities for women, young women, women like yeah, you know, yeah. all these potential women to do a lot of stuff, but not grandmothers. And yeah. that was different, and that made it more exciting because it was just different, and it was a uh, unique for us. Yeah. From Kiribati, remote islands were selected to identify grandmothers. Two grandmothers were selected from Tabonibara in North Tawara Islands and two grandmothers were selected from Mayana Islands, three hours by fast boat. They were selected by the community. They could not believe it in the Solomon Islands. It took time to sink in. Old, illiterate women going all the way to India to become solar engineers in six months. Eventually, in a collective transparent process, Two grandmothers were selected from Buala village in Isabel province. Two grandmothers from Onyara, one from Naro, Guda Canal, the first solar engineers of Solomon Islands. Four women each from Samoa and Vanuatu will be coming. What makes this barefoot approach special, unique? It is focused fundamentally on changing mindsets. The answer in the Pacific Islands is not centralized systems, but decentralized systems managed and repaired by communities. The answer is not training men who only want certificates after training and who leave their villages looking for a job in a city. The answer is training and empowering rural women who will stay because they are more responsible and who will want to improve the lives of their own communities. The answer is to provide enough solar power for lighting and charging mobiles not use diesel generators. It is the women who will change the face of the Pacific Islands. It is fitting that these semi-literate grandmothers will be the first and possibly the only solar engineers of their countries when they come back in March 2013. To make it sustainable, they have to hasten slowly, carry the communities with us and make them feel they own the process. Take it one woman at a time, one community at a time one whole village at a time, one island at a time, and we can never fail to bring hope back to their lives. Start on a journey to prove that the impossible is possible. We are grateful to the Indian government for providing the funds under ITEX to cover the travel and training costs of the 20 women coming to the Barefoot College in India. We are grateful to you and women to provide the travel cost to visit these islands and to ensure that 1,000 houses will be solar electrified, saving 120,000 litres of kerosene from polluting the environment and saving the governments over $1 million in purchase and transportation costs. We are grateful to the EF Small Grants Programme who have agreed to cover the costs of the hardware in some islands. We are grateful to UNESCO for considering to establish community empowerment centres in the Pacific.